Hello, it's Bruce from You Buy a Drone. Wanted to take a couple minutes and go over the new LaForge video transmitter. This is a prototype version. The functions are all the same. The difference is going to be that this is going to come with the 10 centimeter cable version with a 90 degree bulkhead SMA on the end. This is just one that we use for prototyping so we don't have the uh, wire getting in our way when we're messing with it. The things to keep in mind is that every video transmitter will come with a six LED light strip just like this one here. It's going to be plug and play. The only thing that you're going to have to do is solder your cables onto the pads. We did that so that you can designate the length of these wires so you don't have to unsolder it, clip the wires, resolder it, and then be back together. Now since they are programmable LEDs, you can of course chain these into several more and as long as you have the proper power input then you'll be able to go as far as you want with these. Now I will put up the specs for what the uh, amperage is for these LEDs so you know what sort of BEC you might need. Now this is a 5 volt unit so you need to keep that in mind. The video transmitter also is 5 volts only so I have a UBAD PDB here. The UBAD PDB has the, um, it's powered by Maytech. That's who we got in touch with and had them help us make this PDB. So we're going to use the 5 volt output of it. And then the LEDs are going to be pretty much plug and play. You'll just plug that in there and you won't have to worry about which data port goes where. Now, these two aren't hooked up. This is the audio, this is the video. The audio line, if you're not using it, you can just disconnect it. You don't have to ground this like you had to do with the other video transmitters that might be on the market. The LaForge module or the handheld remote will allow you to ground the audio channel through programming versus through a hard wire. So, like I said, you don't need to worry about grounding your audio channel if you're not using it. Now, the video transmitter itself has only one thing that you'll have to do to it to make it bind, and that's this bind switch right here. So when it's in the bind mode, that's going to turn on the IR receiver, and then that's going to be how you program it from your LaForge module or from the handheld remote. So let's get the LaForge module powered up here. When you first power up the module, you'll notice that it has a blue flashing light. That blue flashing light means that it's broadcasting from the IR transmitter on the module. It'll be the same function as the remote control also. Now the video transmitter will get this plugged in. All right, so you'll notice right away, it's already in bind mode because I hit that switch. You'll see that it has some lights. I don't have this covered, so it's gonna be really bright. Now, the two outside lights are flashing blue. That means that it's in bind mode. The four in the middle are telling you which power level that it's in. So right now it's in the 400 milliwatt output mode. Now if I go into my menu and I go to my setup, you'll see here when you scroll down, it'll say video power 400 milliwatts. I didn't do that fast enough. Let me get back in there. And if I press, if I press, there we go, it goes to 25. When I go to save and exit, it's going to begin to flash. Now when I go to bind this, you'll notice that the blue lights will flash green. And then you'll see one LED light. That means that it's 25 milliwatts power output. Now if we go back into the menu and we go to our setup, we come down to page two, we go to 200, we will save and exit, we're still in bind mode, and then when you get that up, you'll see that it flashes green again, now you have two LEDs for the 200 milliwatts. So that's how you're going to get your designation of your power outputs via the LEDs. Okay, so that's how all of the video power outputs are going to be. That's going to be about the only features that you'll see when you're in bind mode is the two flashing blue lights, meaning that it's binding. It'll flash green when it's done binding. One LED for 25 milliwatts, two LEDs for 200 milliwatts, 
four LEDs for 400 milliwatts. Now, whenever you go into the menu and you save what's going on, so I'm gonna go into manual mode. I'm gonna save manual mode so when I exit it stays in manual mode. And just get that done. Now that that's saved, what you can do, if we're gonna start here in the um, airway 5740, and then we go through all the frequencies, uh, 60, 80, 58, 20, 40, 60, and then 58, 80. Now, the only reason I'm gonna stay in this band is so that I can show you something else with this. Now, in the menu, you come down here to setup, and then down here on page two, you're gonna have your video audio. Set up, let me go back here. So your video audio, that's gonna be where you ground it. So if you want it off, you just turn it off and then it's gonna be ground and it's gonna stay off. Now the video color auto. Now when it's in the auto mode, it's going to pre-assign colors to your video transmitter. So basically, if you are flying with a friend and you both have a LaForge video transmitter and you're both set into the color auto, if you select a frequency that's close to him and you have the same color LEDs light up, you're probably too close together and you should change. So what we've done is taken the most common frequencies that are separated from each other and assigned eight different colors to them. So that means that if you're on 5645 and he's on say 5680, they're both gonna be assigned green and you're not gonna to want to fly that frequency with him. So it's a quick identifier. Oh, you've got green LEDs, I've got green LEDs. One of us needs to change our frequency so that we're separated a little bit better. Uh, it also is gonna be good for racing when you're at an event and you can tell your spotter, I'm the green LED, he's the blue LEDs, he's the red LEDs. It's all self-assigned and there's nothing that anybody has to deconflict. It's already done in the software for us. So as I was saying, you go into auto, it's gonna, we're on 5740 starting out and we're in bind mode. I'm gonna just change the channel once. You'll see that the blue LED starts to flash immediately and it starts to bind again. So we'll put that in front of it. We'll wait for it to turn green. Get that in the picture, it's turned green. I put it back into its regular mode and you'll see the LEDs are red. Now when I go to 5760, you'll notice it starts to, it starts to flash blue again because it's going into bind mode. We'll put that video transmitter into bind and we'll hold it so that it gets its signal. It flashes green, take it out of bind mode, and then you'll notice it's now green. Maybe not it's really bright, but anyways, it's green. Um, we'll jump over to the end of this, this, this spectrum here. We'll go to um, 5840, put that into bind mode, make sure the LEDs are aligned. Okay, that took it, so it's flashing green, it bound, and we go back out, and now we have blue LEDs. Well, this is kind of a teal LED. The blue is a little bit um, a brighter blue, it's not so light blue, I guess you could say. So that's gonna be the difference there. And then I just went down a frequency, so we'll bind that. You saw it turn green, take it out of bind mode. And now that's like a, a really white, bright white color. Um, Again, all eight of those are, are gonna be separated by themselves. So, you know, the charts that you get at fly events or you have frequencies assigned to you at events, they're always gonna be a, 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 set, a series of numbers that are already deconflicted. We've, we've done that in the software for you. So it should align with most of the venues that you're gonna race at. Now, under here, we have our VTX color. We have, let me flip this over, it's really bright. Maybe it won't let me. There, I know. I'll just unplug it for now. All right, so what you'll notice in here is we have our setup menu. In our setup menu, we have our VTX color auto, red, lime, green, teal, blue, purple, orange, white, scan. And scan is going to be like your, um, I didn't save it, so it's not going to take it. It's going to be like your old Knight Rider. Okay, it did take it. So it's going to be like Knight Rider. Let me plug this in and then we'll bind it. The um, blue light's flashing, so we go to bind mode on the video transmitter, get it into range, flashes green, 
take it out of bind mode, and we should have the Knight Rider style um, LEDs. Now this is a duplicated LED, so if you do do another series off of it, it's gonna be a duplicate of exactly what this one's doing. Now, future firmware we can change, we can add different light and stuff like that. The one thing I didn't mention is the video transmitter is um, reprogrammable, so if we ever do update the firmware, you guys aren't gonna miss out on it by being early adopters, so no worries about that. Let's go back into the setup menu. We'll come down to our video transmitter colors. We got a booster. Let's turn that back into bind mode. We see it's flashing blue on the module. We hold this up to it, get it within range of it binding. It's flashing green. We do this. And now we have a... Oh, I just grounded that out. That's my fault. All right, well, I'm not gonna be able to play with the video transmitter anymore. I did fry it. Uh, I grounded that SMA out. So anyways, let me just go ahead and show you um, the rest of this. Under setup, we're gonna go down to our colors again. We're gonna have the series of colors, blue, purple, orange, white, scan. Booster's where we left off, and that's where I messed up. So then you're gonna have police, which is a series of blue and red flashing lights. You're gonna have fire, which are red flashing lights. Uh, warning, which is a uh, yellow flashing lights or orange, and then rainbow is just going to kind of scroll through all the colors of all of them, and then you can turn the entire thing off. Now, the other cool thing that is, if you want to do, is later we'll offer the license plate. The license plate is an OLED also that you can plug in, and basically that license plate is going to show you the uh, same information that comes on the screensaver for this. I'm going to wait for it to um, switch over here. It'll be a couple seconds. But the OLED will be the same size as the remote control OLED and it'll show that same information. So it'll show your channel of F3 and then 5780 and your call sign. It won't obviously show the RSSI since it doesn't really matter on the, the video transmitter portion. But that information will be shown on the OLED so that's the gist of the new video transmitter. It is quite small. Um, I'm trying to find something around here that I have to compare it to. Uh, I believe it to be a little bit smaller than the UBAT Hawkeye video transmitters. Um, but uh, here we go. This is a, D, a D4R. So everybody knows what size these are. Same as the X4R SBs that everybody uses. Uh, and this is our video transmitter. So you can see that the size of it is pretty much, uh, it's very similar and it's very small. Uh, you'll be able to put it on anywhere. And I'll put all the specs up on the website with the actual dimensions and the power and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's it. So that should do it for you. If you have any questions, hit us up at the LaForge FPV group and we'll be sure to try to answer your questions.